guys, it's your girl, Ashley Kirkwood with the Speak Your Way to Cash podcast, where we teach you how to start at the top of the speaking market instead of working your way up from the bottom. During this show, you will hear solo episodes from me, where I'll show you how I have landed and negotiated five and six figure speaking contracts and licensing deals. You'll also hear from our amazing guests who have grown enormous speaking businesses by utilizing sales and marketing principles that work. If you want to grow your speaking business, listen to this podcast. And then afterwards, head on over to ashleynicolekirkwood.shop and grab my book, Speak Your Way to Cash, How to Start at the Top of the Speaking Market Instead of Working Your Way Up from the Bottom. Ready to dive in? Let's go. Hey, y'all. What's up to the Speak Your Way to Cash family? It's Ashley Kirkwood back again with another podcast episode. But this time, guys, I am actually going to let you listen in to a live video that I recorded. Now, if you're listening to this live video on the podcast and you're like, oh, I want to join your next live. I want to ask you questions. I want to be able to get feedback about my business. Then you have to follow me on Instagram at The Ashley Nicole Show and make sure you're following the Speak Your Way to Cash Facebook page. All right. Make sure you're following the Speak Your Way to Cash Facebook page because that's where I go live. I also sometimes go live in the Speak Your Way to Cash Facebook group, but enough about that. Even though you may have missed it live, you're about to hear it again. So listen into this live episode and let me know what you think. You can always send me an email to Ashley at speakyourwaytocash.com. Let's listen in. All right. Hello, hello, hello. So excited about this conversation. So excited. Hello. So excited about having this conversation with you guys today. My name is Ashley Kirkwood, host of the Speak Your Way to Cash podcast, founder of Speak Your Way to Cash, a company that has a single mission to help diversify vendor lists at companies across America by helping experts just like you, experts and speakers just like you, land five and six figure corporate speaking and consulting contracts. That's what I do. That's what I do. So hearing that, hopefully you are in the right place. I'm coming to you guys this evening to give you some good, good information. And for those of y'all listening to the podcast, I don't know if it's morning, day, or afternoon, right? But I'm coming to you to talk about what to do if you don't have a network, what to do if you don't feel like you have a network that can refer you to high paying engagements. Hey, Christy, what to do in that instance, all right? So here's what I'd like to say. First of all, if anyone's ever felt like they don't have a network and that is the reason why their business isn't thriving or they don't have a good referral source and that's the reason why their business isn't thriving or they don't have connections and so they think that's why I can't pitch because no one knows me, then this is going to be your episode. Get your paper, get your pen because I'm going to go through, hello, hello, I'm going to go through 10 places to find a network even when you think you don't have one. Good stuff. Really good stuff. Now, what I will say, what I will say, to be honest, is that I remember starting my speaking career and feeling like, oh my goodness, this is daunting. I have to start from the ground up to get clients. What I did not do that was a huge mistake was look at what I already had. Look at the network that I already have for referrals, for advice, for market research. I totally skipped that part and it cost me. Okay, so tag your friends that should be in this Instagram live. Thank you so much, Christy, for tagging. And for those of you on the podcast, listen to all this goodness for yourself and then share it with somebody else who needs it. So let's go. Let's let's start here. One, put it in your mind. I have a network. Matter of fact, if you're watching live, drop that in the chat. I have a network. I have a network. It is often a lie that we're telling ourselves that we don't have a network. It is often a lie. And I say that because when I go through these 10 places to find your network and to find clients that can help you grow your business, that can make an introduction, that can give advice, you're going to realize, wait, I do have a network. There are people that I could go through my phone today and they will help me grow my business. Hey, Odell. So there's all these different things that we tell ourselves. I don't have a network. I don't know who I'm going to ask. I don't know who will, who will introduce me to a senior leader at their organization. I don't have a network. You have a network. All right. I'm seeing that I have a network come through. So number one, this is going to blow your mind. If you've gone to high school, you have a network. Okay. High school. So the first place you can look is your high school network. What is your class doing now? Now, for some of you all, that's traumatic. I don't know your life. I don't know what you went through in high school. Not everybody was the cool kid, the popular one, the one who can get it, you know, get it done, cheerleader, whatever, But whatever your stereotypes are of popular kids in high school, that may not have been your place. But let me tell you something. 
life humbles people, okay? So that person in high school who may not have been nice, may have changed their whole life, got some kids, got a husband, got a spouse, and they're a whole different person. Where are those people that you went to high school with? And hopefully you have at least one or two or three or four people from high school that you really, really liked. Where are they now? What are they doing now? Because in my um, age range, a lot of my friends are senior at their companies right now. So boom, there you go. Look in your high school network, start reaching out via LinkedIn, checking in, letting them know what you have going on, share a compliment and ask for an introduction or some advice. Now, here's another little nugget I'm gonna give y'all. There are two reasons why I reach out to people. One, an introduction. Two, feedback. Feedback is free. In any event, when I'm reaching out for the first time, I like to ask for something that I know that person can do because it makes them feel powerful. Everyone hates being asked for something that they can't do. Like sometimes I get messages from people and it's like, hey, Ashley, can I call you tomorrow at 6 a.m. and talk to you about blah? And I'm like, one, no, but two, yikes. I don't even want to deal with this. I don't want to decline anyone. I don't want to be put in that position. So think through not not your ultimate ask, but what is something that they have the power to do that won't cost them anything and then make it as easy as possible for them to do it. If you want an introduction, give a sample letter, a sample email that they can use to introduce you. If you want them to take 15 minutes with you on the phone, then make sure you give them the time or you give them a link to schedule. If there's an alternative to them taking 15 minutes on the phone with you, like you'll satisfy them answering a one question survey or something like that, give them that. Make it easy for people to do business with you and make it make the yes easy and make the no easy too, okay? Just to be respectful. Most people hate having to reject others. So what do they do instead? Leave you on red. They leave that email right there, okay? They're like, oh no, oh no, I don't want to reject anyone, but I'm also not doing it. So you leave it on red, you delete it, you move on. So you want to make it really easy for people to say yes to you. And if they have to say no, eventually you'll make it easier for them to say, to, for them to respectfully decline, but leave the door open in the future. And here's what I mean by that. Hey, Sarah, notice you haven't answered back just yet. It's probably a busy season for you. Should I follow up later or is this not even in your department? Simple. Now she could just say, you know what? That's not even in my department. You know what I mean? So it's not make it easy for them to say no by being unprofessional. Give them a way out that still keeps the relationship intact. You don't want to be too pushy. Okay. So that's number one. Look at your high school. Two is easy. Look at college. Most people and look at college expansively. Because when I'm doing a campaign and I'm looking for sales directors nationwide, or if I'm looking for operations managers nationwide, I'm looking for everyone that went to the University of Illinois undergrad, the University of Illinois MBA program, University of Illinois certificate holders. Like I am looking at the University of Illinois expansively. Same for Northwestern. I don't care if you went to the undergrad, if you went to you know Northwestern for your MBA, you went to the medical school and now you're working for a pharmaceutical company. You got your PhD from there. You weren't in the same program as me. It's still Northwestern. It's still a commonality that I can leverage to open a door to a conversation. A lot of us have student loans and don't even get our money's worth out of it. Like literally, if you went to college, you need to do everything possible to get your, I haven't even begun to milk my degrees. <laughs> Do you hear me? Like the career services officer, the career service office at your campus may have alumni connections or programming. They may know what you can do for that. You can go to your alumni office and say, hey, a lot of our alum are doing really well. I would like to do a complimentary session for all of our alum surrounding this topic, specifically those who are like chief marketing officers, but you can open up to the entire alumni database. It'll be virtual, all hosted, but they do have to register on my site. Okay, this is, this is high level stuff. Now I talk about hosting events in the Speak Your Ready Cash book. So go and go to the source child, all right? So keep that in mind, your college, think of it expansively. Grad school, grad school, what are your classmates doing? If you don't have an alumni book or you can't get to like, you need, or maybe you need to go to the library and get one of those um, Alumni books that list all of the alum, they have these types of records that they can share with you. Maybe you buy them or otherwise. Get it. 
find where people are or use LinkedIn Sales Navigator and just search. Search for alumni nationwide in Chicago that have a certain job title. These are all things that you could be doing because that's your network and you paid for that network. So leverage that network. That's three, grad school, four is family and friends. And I don't mean your mom or your dad has to be senior at a company. They may work at a company and be able to introduce you to someone in a particular department, even if it's not their department. What are your friends doing? Where do they work? Like what's, you have to think expansively about your network. So family and friends is a good one. Five is clubs. I was on debate in high school. So looking at, People who were on the debate team my year, who were on the debate team previous years, debate and speech are great places to look if you're trying to see where the, the rock stars from your high school class are. A lot of them were on debate and speech, okay? Or theater. Shout out to my theater people. So you have clubs, like clubs that you were in and in high school or in college. Where are those folks at? The six is associations. Now, this is a network that everyone can leverage because all it takes to join an association is a little bit of money. Most of them cost less than 400 bucks to join an association. And that's for the entire year. And once you're in that association, what are you going to do? Reach out to the members of that association. Start connecting, start leveraging the, the fact that you all have commonality. Seven is coaching programs. I've made phenomenal relationships by joining high dollar amount coaching programs, meeting other people that have similar interests and bonding. Depending on the size of the program, though, this takes work because I'm not a big fan of aimless networking. What is aimless networking? Well, I can give you examples because people used to reach out to me to do aimless networking all the time. And I always say no. Here is aimless networking. Hey, Ashley, I see that you're a living, breathing human being. Can we meet for coffee next week? No, we cannot. What is the purpose of this coffee? Where is our commonality? What are we going to discuss? How will it be mutually beneficial? It needs to make sense for both parties. If you network selfishly because you want to be aligned with someone or you want a business bestie, I'm doing this air quotes around it because like most people want business besties. They just want like a business gossiping buddy. But like, okay, business bestie, maybe you need that. Whatever the case may be. Thank you so much. Uh, we had a comment that says, love your podcast. You want to make sure that it is like focused, targeted networking that will help both you and them. And if you're reaching out to them, to do a virtual coffee chat or something, and you know you want something from them or you want to discuss a particular topic with them, let them know up front. Don't bait and switch people. It's not fair. Give them a good opportunity to say no because they know exactly what you're offering. Don't trick them into saying yes. And then you get on there and there's like this PowerPoint spread um, sales call. I did a podcast for someone one time. This cracked me up. You guys are not going to believe this. So I do this podcast episode. I'm all excited and giddy to be on this person's podcast. It was cool. They invited me to do the podcast. I do the show. Immediately after the show, they're like, all right, I have someone I want you to meet. Literally, a whole nother human being appears on the Zoom call that I've never seen. I had no idea this was going to happen. After this other person joins us for this Zoom call, the initial lady who invited me, who I knew I was talking to, shares her screen and they do a full-on business pitch as to why they want me to speak for free to their membership. And, and they'll, actually, it didn't say what they would do for me. It was like, just speak for free. These are our stats. It was so weird. And I was taken so off guard that I was like, oh, okay. Thank you. Talk to you later. Was this, the, like, was this a trick? Did you, did you invite me on your podcast to have me do something else for, like, was, what, what's the, was this a, was this a thing? Don't do that. Don't be the person that says, I want to have virtual coffee. They show up and you have a PowerPoint slide pitch deck of all these things you want them to do with no benefit to them. It's weird and intimidating. And if people don't expect it, now they're going to think you're weird. Okay, so don't be weird. <laughs> do not do that. Always be thinking about mutual benefit. And ideally, you would, you would be in a race to benefit the other person before they benefit you. It is here. The Speak Your Way to Cash book is now available for you to purchase. Go to Amazon to get your audio, Kindle, or hardcover copy of the book. And we have a paperback copy, okay? So you can get it on Audible and listen to it. And I read it myself. So if you love the podcast, you will love the audio book. Go get it now. Speak Your Way to Cash, how to start at the top of the speaking market instead of working your way up from the bottom. A bit about the book. It's broken down into six parts and it is over 260 pages of goodness, okay? 
Part one covers mindset. Part two covers getting yourself in the press. Part three covers assembling your six-figure offer. Part four covers inviting people to work with you. Ahem, sales. Part five covers delivering an outstanding speech. And part six covers legalities that every speaker needs and how to build a team. I mean, literally, what did we leave out? Nothing. So go to Amazon and grab your copy today. And let me know you did it too. And if they're doing you, if they are meeting with you initially and you're getting benefit out of that, what are you going to do for them? Can you send them a book? Can you um, co-author a a blog for them? Do they have a community? Can you speak for free? Like, what can you do to benefit them if they're doing something to benefit you? Can you have them on your show? Can you have them on your podcast? Can you share their LinkedIn posts? We need to start thinking. We, We should be thinking about how we can be the plug. How can we be the person that people love to see coming because wherever we show up, we bring value and expertise? How can we be the plug? Especially when you're in a learning phase and you're going to always obviously be needing to learn and learning happens peer to peer. So think about that. So we are on, that was associations. Um, A good thing about associations too is you'll, you'll build industry connections with other people you will build industry connections with other people. And if you are on Instagram and have a question, hit that question box, put it in the the question box and I'll answer that question before we we head out. Seven is the coaching program that talked about that. Eight would be books. This is a really cool strategy, guys. Books. Most authors don't sell more than a thousand copies of their books, but a lot of people have books. Some of them very interesting. One thing you can do that served me really, really well, when I want someone on my podcast, I buy all their books or some of their books, read it. And in my pitch, I let them know, hey, I read your book, chapter five, where you talk about X, Y, and Z, life-changing. I'd love to have you on to talk about this. I believe my audience of speakers would absolutely love what you have to offer. Read people's books. It's a huge, 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 huge uh, compliment. We had a young lady read the Speaker Rated Cash book, do a whole unboxing on her YouTube video, start a book club about the book. And I I was so honored by the whole thing. I messaged her, And I was like, okay, here's what I'll do. I will go ahead and speak to your book club free of charge. Just let me know the date, get with my assistant, we'll figure it out. So read people's books, let them know you've read it, share that you've read it and what, how it's brought value to your life. If you get any results using someone's system or podcast or anything, let them know about that. We had someone the other day, she shared that she had received her trademark from taking our DIY trademark class where we teach you how to do it yourself. Literally saved thousands of dollars on a lawyer, did her own trademark, got it through to completion. Really cool. Really cool. Yes. People love to hear about themselves. So flatter them. (laughs) Flattery works. Be honest. Actually have the books, have read it and all of that. But yeah, let people know that, that what they're doing matters. And even over and above that, creators put so much work into the things that they put out into the world. Like we have over 150,000 podcasts that you all have gotten value from. It took a lot of work to record all that. If anyone's writing blogs, writing books, posting on social media, creating reels, they are they're putting effort into that. They love what they're doing. So, it, And sometimes you don't get a million likes as a creator. And so if there's a couple people liking it or people saying like this has value, it really encourages them to keep putting out really good work. 10 would be, uh, nine is podcasts. So the podcast that you love listening to, do they have communities? Do they have communities? Absolutely. Thank you for ordering the book. Do they have podcast communities? Are, is there a community in there that you can talk to, that you can ask a question of, that you can ask that group to introduce you to? We have the Speak Your Way to Cash podcast. Several other podcast hosts also host their own community. Is there a way for you to respectfully go in their group and ask some questions and get some engagement and find out whether people can introduce you to your ideal customer? Now, note on this, because we've dealt with this. If someone has cultivated a community online and they sell speaking services and products and you sell the same services and products, do not go in their group trying to self-promote and like hijack their community that they've worked to build over several years. It'll just get you blocked. I can just tell you that right now. So be careful. <laughs> like, Be careful out here in these internet streets. Be respectful of people's communities. Read the group rules. No self-promotion is typically a rule in most groups. So mm, be careful on that. But do go in there and build genuine relationships. We've also seen, I mean, it's been weird things online. Like we had someone try to like just do some weird IP theft things and they got blocked. So so don't do anything rude or disrespectful. The whole goal 
is to find good people, make good connections, do good work, so it all comes back to you. The goal is not offend a whole lot of people at one time. So to the degree that you can, think how you can add value first, and that typically is a rule that works and won't get you kicked out of things, okay? So we've gone through 10 in like less than 20 minutes. So these are all different ways all different places that you all can look for a network and you can ask these networks potentially for referrals that will help you in your business. One thing we do at Speak Your Way to Cash Live that everyone listening to this can benefit from, um, we did something last year at our event. We actually had one of our attendees get up and do a five minute speech in front of the entire group. I did not tell her I was going to do this. It was totally off script, but I knew she was prepared because she was in the academy. And she crushed it, ended up landing one of her first five-figure contracts from presenting. And after she did her presentation, because she did so such a good job, I asked all the members there who had an HR director or a senior leader at their company to introduce her to someone else. And that was so great because at Speak Your Way to Cash Live, we like to do more than just teach good information. We build community. So we're the type of organization, like you come to our events, you're going to be in the room with powerful, successful people, period. Like we have such a powerful community. Why not cultivate that and get people talking and networking and helping other people out? It literally was life changing. We had so many people. We had so many people that were landing. We had another attendee of the event, literally during the event, secure a $7,500 contract just from doing a follow-up strategy. So I'm just saying, y'all should be a speaker in a cash live. But all that to say, had I not said, hey guys, you all know HR directors, people wouldn't, people would have maybe seen how amazing her speech was, but they may not have thought, whoa, I have the power to help this young lady get to the next level in her career. And all of you hold that same power. So when you're asking for referrals, think about how can I refer them to someone? How can I promote them to my audience? Regardless of the size of your email list, how can there be something that's mutually beneficial? I'm big on thinking about mutually beneficial. And if you don't want to be mutually beneficial, just pay people. Go on and pay them. You know, we do that too. Like we have influencers that we work with and we're like, okay, we're not going to do affiliate commissions and all that. We'll pay you. We'll straight up pay you out to get in front of your audience. So that is, that's, that's a thing too. But if you're working on limited budget, do that. Speaker Ready Cash was so lit, Emily. Oh my gosh. Um, thank you so much, Mike. I really appreciate it. But yeah, so those are some ideas you guys can think about when you think you don't have a network. When you think you don't have a network, you do. And the 10 places you can look, I'll do a recap. High school alumni, college alumni, grad school alumni, family and friends. They don't have to be the connect, but they can introduce you to the connect. Clubs associations, coaching programs, books, podcasts, and Facebook group. So, you know, keep those things in mind. But for me now, I'm trying to shorten my learning curve. I'm reading books. I'm doing some networking. But I'm also paying to be around the people that I want to be around. And that just helps. That's why really high quality coaching programs are great because you end up getting really close. One thing we're doing this week. Oh, this week. We are having a networking mixer for everyone in the Speak Your Way to Cash Academy this year. So we can do speed networking and everyone can learn about everyone's capabilities so that when an opportunity comes along that we're not the perfect fit for, we can refer it within our network. We want to keep as much money connectivity in the Speak Your Way to Cash network as we can. Um, and we have some cool ways of, of really facilitating that this year. But each of you listening to this has the ability to help someone else. The more you help others, the more they're excited about helping you. Keep that in mind. There's more than enough business to go around. You do have a network. You just need to think creatively about leveraging your network. All right. So think about that. Um, Christy, it's for our academy. Registration is closed for the academy, but it opens up at Speak Your Way to Cash Live. We may open it one more time this year. But if you're on my mailing list, you all will know about that. All right. This was a quick live. Hopefully you got some value out of it. If you have a question, please drop it in the question box or send me an email to hello at Ashley. Well, just do hello at speakyourwaytocash.com and my team can add, the, add that question to our next episode or whenever I record the next podcast episode. But y'all should have some ideas. Your head should be spinning with ideas in a good way um, about how you can grow and expand 
your speaking business by leveraging the networks you're already a part of. The other thing about books that I didn't say, if you've read someone's book and they've added a lot of value to your life, maybe you reach out to the author of the book. You know, they may have a community or somewhere else where you can get more ingrained in what they have going on and find a connection or a community or a network that way. But literally with ad costs going sky high, people to people is the way to go. Ads are great, but it's becoming a game that you only play when you have the money to play it. And it used to be a lot cheaper. And now it's just not. Like I was sharing with one of my friends for one of our campaigns, our lead cost was like $40 per um, per conversion which works for what we're selling on the back end, but it's still considerably higher than what we were spending beforehand. So keep that in mind. There are other organic ways for you to grow your business by utilizing networks you are already in and likely overlooking. All right. So hopefully this was good. If it was, share it with a friend. Please let me know. And y'all have a really powerful week. Excited about Monday and what's going to happen this week. All right, wasn't that interview amazing? If you're anything like me, you have pages full of notes. But here's the thing. Before you head out, I want you to go to Facebook.com and join the Speak Your Way to Cash Facebook group. That is where I am. That's where a ton of other speakers are, a ton of other people who listen to the show. All We all congregate there and chat. And it's 100% free. Now, if you're ready to take your speaking career to the next level, I have two ways for you to do that. One, you can go to AshleyNicoleKirkwood.com slash SYWTC live replay and pick up the live replay. That training is seven modules, chock full of information. It's crazy. Go over there, read all about it. Or if you want a more personal experience, you're already... You already know that you want to be a speaker. You're ready to fully commit and you want someone to walk you through it and save you tons of time Googling and doing it on your own. Then book a VIP day with me. You can go to AshleyNicoleKirkwood.com. Scroll down until you see the VIP day section and get more information on that there. All right. Thank you guys again for watching. Please do not forget to leave us a review. That is how we keep this train rolling and get some of the best speakers in the world to get on this show. So please, please, please leave a review. Shoot me a message on Facebook or Instagram and Facebook in the Speaker Way to Cash group, Instagram at, at the Ashley Nicole Show. And I'd be more than happy to chat with you and say hi. All right, y'all have an awesome, awesome day.